Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well. Thank you for watching this clip on equation of the circle. We're going to switch from a general form to a standard form. Basically what's involved is, as much as you might not want to hear it, it's complete square. Okay, So there are two thoughts of completing square. You can add a number on this side and on this side to equal sign. Let me demonstrate it. So you have x squared. Let's group all the x first. I'm going to leave a spot here because I need a number there to make the first three terms into a perfect square. I'm going to move this 4 over to this side of the equation. I leave the, left a spot here also. So the first approach, the general thought is, look, if I add a number a here, I can add another number a here. Because the equal sign, I am not disturbing whatever I had before because I added one here, I added one here as well. If I add another one here, I'm going to have to add a number b here. And that kind of balance it out. So let's try this approach here first. The number a that I want to add, the perfect number, thus completing square, is I'm going to take the coefficient in front of it. I'm going to take half of it and then square it. So for our case, it's a plus 1. And then I'm going to add a 1 here on this side. Do the same thing over here. Plus 4 divided by 2 squared. I'm going to add a 4 here. Better add a 4 here as well to keep my equation balanced. Now, if you factor the first three terms, you have a perfect square. Oh, not a plus sign. Minus 1 squared. This is the cross term is a minus. Add, that's this e adding sign. And we'll have a y plus 2 squared. And then equal to 9. Combine this. Okay, so here's the equation of a circle. Technically, this we probably should leave it as a 3 squared. Then the radius is 3. Now, over the years, there's a problem with the pro approach that I just showed you. If this equal sign is missing, a lot of students start struggling because they don't know where to put the other number. One thing you can do, so let's just call this method 1. If you have an equal sign, great, use this because add one here, add one here, it makes sense. Kind of like a balancing scheme here. If you add a weight here, you're going to add the same weight on this side. It keeps it completely balanced. However, if you're missing the equal sign, which is not the case in this one here, but we'll pretend we don't have an equal sign. I'm going to leave the equal sign equal to 0 way over there. I can still balance the equation or do the same problem without adding anything on that side. So I'm not even going to touch this side. So for the case that you don't have an equal sign, this approach works out uh, much better than trying to struggle in where to put that balance here and here. Let's try this, and we'll call this method 2. As we started, we'll do the same thing. We're going to move all the x together, we'll group the like terms, plus 4y. And I'll put a minus 4 over here. And the second thought is to, to see this. Look, I want to add a number. If I subtracted it right away, technically I haven't changed anything. If I add 5, I subtract 5. Technically I haven't changed x squared minus 2x. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add something and subtract it right away. Okay. Because I'm adding and subtracting right next to each other, I don't really care if you have an equal sign or not. So thus, we're getting away from the problem. If you don't have an equal sign, what do I do? Okay, so I'm going to add something, subtract right away. I get some payment maybe on Friday, or I spend it right away. So in net, I have nothing left. The number I want to add here is exactly identical. Take minus 2 divided by 2 and square it. So I'm going to add 1, and I'm going to subtract 1. And here I'm going to add the same thing here. 4 divided by 2 and square it. So I'm going to add 4, and I'm going to subtract 4 right away. Okay, now, so far I have not touched anything on the right-hand side at all. I'm going to group the first three, thus finishing my completing square. And let's just tag this one along. Okay, this part is just left over here. 
and then plus, this is this plus sign. Next, I'm going to do the completing square on this term. Okay, then I have a minus 4 tagging along. This minus 4 was the original one. Okay, so from here, I can gather all my square terms. And I have minus 1, minus 4, minus 4, so I have a minus 9 equal to 0. Okay. The last step, I have any kind of coefficient here, I can switch it over to the right hand side. So as far as the process itself is concerned, I touch nothing on this side. So if, even if you don't have an equal sign, you're safe. Okay, so up to here, you're still doing exactly the same thing. So this is a second approach. Over the years, I must say I've grown fond of this approach because it can does not place any importance on the if you have a equal sign or not. Okay, so this is method two. We get exactly the same answer, x squared plus, uh, 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 this is a minus one, I think I copied around. It's minus one here. And then plus y squared and equal to nine. All right, I hope this is clear. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making math fun. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.